Hello and welcome to another mod showcase episode for Kerbal Space Program. This episode highlights another useful UI addition for the in-game editors. It shows how a vessel will behave when firing RCS thrusters, especially useful if they are not well aligned to the center of mass. Did you ever wonder why during a docking attempt your craft just wouldn't stay stable? Then stay tuned. Free floating objects in space behave differently than objects with ground contact when it comes to applied force. In the context of this mod we look at the acceleration of a vessel in space with engines or thrusters. If an engine is not aligned along the axis of the center of mass, it will not only accelerate the spacecraft, but also change its orientation and thus change its course. To illustrate this, take a pen and hold it with your thumb and index finger. Now push with a finger from the other hand against where you are holding the pen. The pressure applied will move it to the right. If instead you apply pressure on the top end, however, the pressure will be translated into a rotary motion, changing the orientation of the pen. The analogy to the spaceship the center of mass is where you are holding the pen. If you are applying pressure, it's like activating the engines. The mod can help us align RCS thrusters with the center of mass of the vessel to minimize unwanted rotary motion. Once you have built or loaded a model in the construction hangar and you activate the center of mass overlay at the bottom left, new color-coded arrows appear on the model. The new window can be placed anywhere and includes four function groups. In the first group we can choose what kind of thrust we want to display. Clicking on the button we can select Translation meaning thrust in a direction, engines, the main thrust without RCS thrusters, attitude, and none. Let's have a look at the translation values. Reference indicates the point of reference for the displayed arrows, which can be the center of mass or dry center of mass. COM center of mass is displayed as a yellow ball and includes all fuels. This is the default overlay in KSP. The COM dry center of mass is shown as a red ball. Fuel tanks values are calculated as empty. Depending on the design, COM and DCOM can differ significantly and, of course, affect the flight behavior during thruster activation, which leads to instability. Direction simulates the desired direction of light. The arrows change their direction, indicating the expected behavior of the vessel. The cyan arrows indicate the direction of thrust. The green arrow indicates direction of flight. The little green arrow in front, the ideal direction. Red arrows show torque, meaning the tendency of a vessel to rotate along an axis. A red circle around the COM indicates that the vehicle will not only change direction, but also change its attitude, meaning it will try to turn its nose. Torque denotes the force with which a vehicle will rotate around its center of mass. This value should be as small as possible. Thrust values affect the velocity with which course changes can be made. Delta V denotes acceleration range, meaning how many meters per second of course change can be achieved with the existing fuel supply, in our case monopropellant. 
The tool calculates this value on curve in sea level and is to be considered a rough estimation. Burn time indicates how long the thrusters can remain active until fuel runs out. This value in conjunction with delta V can help estimate course correction times. After switching to engine mode, only our main engine thrust will be taken into account. There is a new value to consider here, TWR, thrust weight ratio. A higher value indicates a faster change in velocity at maximum thrust. Attitude mode shows a change in orientation achieved only with thrusters. No reaction wheels or engine gimbals are taken into account here. Clicking on the second group, vessel mass, three new values appear. Wet mass denotes the full weight of the vehicle including fuel. Dry mass denotes the weight of the vehicle without fuel. DCOM offset indicates the shift in meters during fuel consumption between both extremes. A high value means high instability over time. If we activate the third group by clicking on resources, we get a listing of all available fuels and charges, as well as their weight in tons. The option to select deselect resources affects the calculation of dry center of mass. If we choose oxidizer, it gets added to the dry mass. If we deselect it, an empty tank is assumed. We open the fourth and last group by clicking on markers. Here we can choose what markers to see and how large they shall be displayed. We already know COM and DCOM. A COM stands for Average Center of Mass and is displayed as orange bar. It can be used to find a quick compromise when positioning thrusters. One can use keyboard shortcuts to simulate flight direction. We use secondary in-game controls I, J, K, L, H and N to do that. If you press the corresponding button twice, all direction indicators will disappear. The following example will show you how to optimize the spaceship with the help of this tool to avoid instabilities. We choose a small spaceship, here I have put together a capsule, parachutes, docking port, a separator, battery, reaction wheels, monoprop tank, ALF tank, thrusters and an engine. Looks good at first glance, ready to maneuver in orbit and land on Curvit later on. But is it stable? To see the center of mass indicator, we click on the button on the bottom left. Once it activates, we immediately notice that both spheres are far apart. And a red circle arrow indicates rotation. The high torque value confirms this. What happened? The blue arrows show us in which direction the thrusters fire. In this case they fire to the right because we want to move left. They are not placed where the center of mass is and cause a problem. A quick solution would be to reposition the thrusters closer to the center of mass to minimize rotation. To do this we open the marker subset, toggle COM and DCOM off and ACOM on to only show the orange ball. Now we align the thrusters towards the orange ball and see how the red circle gets smaller and vanishes completely. The torque value got smaller too. 
that solved our problem, right? Not quite. Although we have minimized the unwanted movements, we only shifted the problem. Now the instability gets smaller as we use our fuel, only to become an issue again when tanks get empty. The better optimization is to bring both center of masses as close as possible. To do this we need to move modules or rebuild some of them. We begin by changing the position of reaction wheels and batteries to the bottom of the rocket. Basically everything that has no fuel in it. This will shift the dry center of mass. It did help a little, but it's not enough. Let's try to replace the monoprop tank. We remove it, search for external tanks, put them on the outside of the hull and increase their numbers. Looking good, both center of masses are close together now. Then we place the thrusters in the middle and it should result in a pretty stable vehicle. Have we missed something? Yes, a final test is necessary. We open the resources tab and see that monopropellant is activated, meaning the calculation of the dry mass always assumes full monoprop tanks. However, doing maneuvers will empty the tank, so we want to know how big a difference that will make. We disable monoprop and see how the dry center of mass jumps upwards. If we want, we can reposition the RCS thrusters to compensate this. We can repeat this till no red circle errors are visible anymore. With this the optimization is complete. A successful design. The video description provides more information and links to the model.